Patrick Rogers is here. Um, I, I thought just, I, I saw just, him. I just saw him. Uh, Patrick is the VP of Alliances at uh, NetApp. And, um, you know, obviously an infra infrastructure company. We had, John, you remember you had Dave Hitz on at Oracle Open World? And, he was uh, phenomenal. Yeah, he was very good. And we were asking at the time all the storage CEOs and executives, how is storage sexy? And you were sort of telling him that. And you were moving on. He said, let, let me tell you my answer. You know, we're not sexy. We're the plumbing. We're the, we're the infrastructure. So, so we're going to hear from Patrick. And uh, Patrick, why don't you come on in? So Patrick Rogers, as I say, a VP of Alliances at, at NetApp. NetApp, very fast-growing storage company, you know, one of the leaders out there, fastest-growing, big storage company out there. Um, there may be some little guys growing faster, but from a tiny little base, NetApp, four or five billion dollar company. Patrick, welcome. Good to see you again. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming on. Uh, my co-host, John Furrier, that you, Great to see you guys have met. Kind of so yeah, um, <laughs> Sapphire. Sapphire now, it's a good, good show. We were here last year. Um, you guys made some announcements last year. You got we some did. stuff going on this yep. year. Yep. Why we start? Why are you here? What's going on with uh, SAP? Yeah. So uh, the big news for us at, at Sapphire this year is really around infrastructure refresh. You know, we're hearing a lot from customers that they want to move to virtualized, oftentimes x86 type platforms, and they would really like to drive cost and improve efficiency, you know, speed time to market for their SAP applications, and so we're very excited. Uh, to be rolling out uh, a new uh, pre-integrated, pre-packaged solution for SAP. And we're doing this uh, together with Cisco. And so our big news is, is uh, uh, what we call SAP applications built on FlexPod. And so uh, this is, uh, we, we announced FlexPod pre-integrated solutions with uh, VMware and with Cisco last November. And now we're doing this specifically for the SAP stack. So these are, are solutions that are pre-tested, pre-configured, is that right? Is That's right. They're pre-certified. It's a design architecture. But the idea is, you know, as a customer, you don't want to have to integrate the server, the storage, the network backbone, the virtualization software. You'd like to have that all done for you ahead of time. So you guys have, have proven this out in your, in your labs? Where, where, where we actually have customers that have implemented this. So, uh, you know, as part of this announcement, a uh, very large copper mining company here in the U.S., uh, Freeport McMoran, has implemented and gone live with SAP applications, you know, running on a combined uh, Cisco VMware NetApp solution. So you got, you know, you're hearing a lot about the changes in infrastructure applications and, uh, of course, the devices, tectonic shifts going in, in all of those. <laughs> You know, the Sapphire crowd, as you know, I mean, it's a storage company. You guys sell to, you know, storage admins and, yep. you know, guys in the infrastructure world. This yep. is a different crowd, isn't it? I mean, it's a, it's a yeah. business crowd. A lot of line of business, yeah. CIOs, yeah. maybe even some, some CEOs here. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. How do you get them to care about infrastructure? Yeah, so uh, the key word is cost savings and business agility, right? So that's what they're looking for out of their application environment. And a lot of them, you know, recognize how complicated and complex it is to, to run all the various SAP modules, and you need an infrastructure that helps simplify that. And so they, they do care. Um, they probably don't care about the details, but they care about the result. So, so the cost savings thing, so that, the agility, I could see that resonating strongly yeah. with an application head. Yeah. And I want to get it done faster, right? I want to get the function out quicker. Do they care about the cost of the infrastructure? Oh, absolutely. I mean, they do. Yeah, you wouldn't believe, you know, what infrastructure expense can be. You know, if you have a 30 terabyte SAP instance, uh, it's a pretty significant investment that you're making, and you have to refresh, you know, every three years. Um, same thing goes with your server infrastructure. Oh, I know customers care. I don't. I don't doubt oh, that. It's the yeah, application sorry. head. Does the application head care, oh, or does he oh, or she say, yeah. eh, "That's somebody else's problem"? And how do you? Yeah. Yeah. How do you navigate through that maze? How do you yeah. get, yeah. or do you even try to fight yeah, that no, battle? No, I understand your yeah. point. It's a very good one. And really the story for the application developers is, gosh, you know, you're doing upgrades, applying patches. Oftentimes you're doing this on a monthly basis, right? Wouldn't it be great if we could speed that whole patch deployment process, right, and refresh or upgrades? Um, and so moving to one of these new FlexPod uh, infrastructures allow you to do that. It can really cut the time to install a new module or upgrade an existing module from months down to weeks. So huge advantages there. So for them, it's about agility and it's speed, right? NetApp, you guys are innovating, obviously, you know, in, in Silicon Valley-based company, Darling in, in the uh, startup world. You guys grown crazy, crazily fast in the uh, 90s, uh, I mean the 2000s, and then innovating. Uh, how do you handle the whole M&A craze going on? Because that's mashing up technology. Cisco, we were talking about last week at EMC World, has kind of missed the whole Web 2.0 movement because they had the big mashup of in acquisitions. And the leader in Internet 1.0 kind of missed the, the boat on 
Internet 2.0, and Chambers is on the hot seat. You know, we think he's kind of missing his stride, losing his step a little bit uh, in terms of a tech athlete. So Cisco's kind of rebooting. They got to go side mainly because I think is the acquisitions because you got all this technology. You guys have not done a lot of acquisitions, done some here and there, but strategically kind of lower lower price relative to the big guys. Right. Um, how do you how do you operate in that environment as, as a tech company? Yeah, that's a great everyone's bul bulking up with acquisitions. Yeah. Um, what's the core philosophy? And how, how do you talk to your customers and say, hey, you know, NetApp, you're a mid range player yeah. in you know niche storage vendor. Yeah. Well, you know, we we're uh, may not be uh, well known to everybody, but now twenty percent of all storage shipped by capacity comes from NetApp. So, you know, we're not uh, a niche player anymore, right? So, NetApp today is one of the far, four largest storage suppliers in the world today, and you know, the only one uh, that's growing at twenty percent annually. So, uh, um, you know, we can, our message is getting out there. It's continuing You've had to be great heard. financial performance. I mean, you consistently. And, yeah, I mean, yeah, and market share performance. You know, even we're proud of the financial performance. We're even prouder and we're really driven by our market share gains. We, we had Tom Georgens on at um, VMworld, and yeah. we were asking him about that. How is it that NetApp is able to grow at the time, you know, 35% yeah. when the industry's growing at whatever, pick your number, 9%, 10%. Yeah. yeah. And he said, you know, we don't really look at the 35%. That's not how, what we tune our business towards. We tune it toward gaining share. Exactly right. One or two points a share per year, yeah. right? Is yeah. that the that mindset? Is, that is exactly right. The company is all about not growth for growth sake, uh, but really trying to you know become the largest player in the storage space. And to your point about acquisitions, we've been very focused, right? We are focused on data management, and we have such a powerful and important ecosystem of partners we work with uh, at the server networking layer and at the application layer. And frankly, you know, one of the keys to success for NetApp is our partner ecosystem. And we have such great teamwork, you know, with companies like SAP or with VMware or name, you name it, BMC and the management side. How do you compete with VMware? I mean, I mean, EMC, for example, they own VMware, yeah. right? So obviously, you know, they're number one with VMware virtualization. How do you guys, do you guys feel second place there? I mean, I mean yeah. you know, I mean, yeah. obviously they have inside information. Yeah. Given that they own each other, I mean, they yeah. gotta be. Yeah, yeah. So, um, how do you guys respond to that? Well, uh, VMware's been very good about maintaining a effectively a firewall or, or a, a Chinese wall between their operations and the rest of, of VMware. And it was a pretty significant move and they decided to spin out and have a separate tracking stock for VMware because the responsibility of VMware is now to their fiduciary you know, stockholders, right? And of which, you know, EMC is a major one, but they also have many other partners there or uh, stockholders that they're responsible to. So, so sort of similar question, but in a, in a more specific to FlexPod. So yeah. you really, when you think about... Um, By the way, can I just compliment you guys? You did a recent study on uh, share of virtualization partners. Yeah. Um, and uh, it looked pretty much to us that uh, the two dominant players by far were EMC and NetApp. In well, thank terms you. Thanks yeah. for that. This was something, yeah. a study Wikibon. that was done at Wikibon. And, um, so I think there was some significant findings there. Um, There's a loyal base amongst your... One was EMC and, and NetApp came out one and two in terms of um, VMware brand affinity. Um, the other interesting thing there was when we asked customers, all right, who's your primary supplier? It was you know, EMC or, and VMware or, or, or NetApp were the two primary suppliers. But then we asked, who's number one at VMware storage? Only EMC and NetApp customers said... EMC and NetApp, respectively. All yeah. the other vendors said somebody else. That's right. Um, yeah. Now that was interesting. Now when you dig into it, you know, for example, they didn't have a lot of three par no. information in there. Three par gets very high marks. You know, we, we we they do a good job of integration, but small. Yeah. So we'll see if HP can can make that. But very good scores for NetApp, clearly, yeah. which which refuted some of the other stuff that we'd seen in the marketplace. So we Absolutely. were happy to, to confirm that. So Absolutely thank you. right. So when yeah. I look at um, FlexPod, uh, and, and really we've said that. There's two big whales going after that single logical block of infrastructure. It's really VCE and, and HP with converged mm -hmm. infrastructure, and then NetApp, mm -hmm. you know, as a as a as a clear strategy. I mean, IBM mm -hmm. is really not doing it. And Oracle's sort of doing its appliance thing. Mm -hmm. So, what do you bring to the table that's different than say a VCE or an HP? So uh, let's pick off VCE first. So. Um, you know, initially VC was set up to provide full integration services, right? That was the objective. Uh, Acadia, as you recall, was uh, a key initiative for them. And it effectively provide an integration capability that allowed them to compete effectively with HP or with IBM. NetApp took a different approach. You know, we're not in competition with the integrators. They are our partners. 
And so we developed the FlexPod concept, which was really a pre-packaging and a consolidated um, pre-configured solution that we made available to all of our joint channel partners and system integrators. And that turned out to be a very, very effective approach and has resulted in a pretty significant ramp of, of product uh, being sold in that form with, with uh, Cisco. Um, you know, HP is certainly a very formidable competitor because they've been established for a long time, significant market share, but we're finding that most of our wins are at the expense of, of HP. And people are looking for best of breed, best in class technologies at the server layer, at the storage layer, particularly, you know, IP capable switches um, that provide a much better value proposition than what you would think of as traditional SAN, and then of course NetApp storage with its efficiency and flexibility advantages. So it's really that entire stack of best of breed technologies that that we find is becoming a very popular choice. So if I translate that, I mean essentially you compete the same way you compete in storage. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. Take, okay. take it up another layer, Dave, exactly. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, All right, good. So um, so what do you, what's, you know, the other thing we're hearing here is mobility, right? The mobility, 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 simplicity, but yeah. mobility is a really big, strong theme. Um, yeah. And you don't necessarily think about SAP as, a, you know, the mobile enterprise company, but yeah. they're changing that from a brand standpoint. What, sure. do you, what do you make of that, and what does it mean for NetApp? Well, you know, from a storage provider's perspective, it has implications, and that is, you know, with mobility, it is actually driving more storage to the core. Right? because people are effectively keeping um, short-term information on their mobile devices. They want to have the permanent store in a central, secure, you know, mission-critical, enterprise-ready location. And so uh, it is driving actually more business uh, for us as, as people move from a distributed storage model to a more centralized solution you know, that supports various mobile devices and, and platforms. Patrick, is there something in the marketplace um, out there? Obviously, you're involved in that a pretty innovative company. You're dealing with alliances and strategy and ecosystem. And, you know, there's a lot of money being made here at SAP. This show clearly demonstrates that this ecosystem has been flourishing for over a decade, clearly. And money has changed hands significantly in this market. Yeah. And it's changing again, cloud, yeah. mobile. Yeah. Um, and we're hearing that, and everyone sees it. So it's a, it's a frenzy. Yeah. Um, how do you look at the, that, the money making relative to, to NetApp? How do you go in there and, and talk to customers saying, we can help you fit better with SAP? Is it virtualization? Are there new technologies out there that are, that are on your mind that are like, hey, we're making a bet on this technology, Val is on the cube at SMW, Storage Networking World. Yeah. You know, and, and he said, you know, basically, you know, I'm paraphrasing, you know, Hadoop flat-footed us. And so these new techs are out there like Hadoop, big data. Yeah. What is your story in these new tech areas? Can you show us some vision yeah. around yeah, how that sure. vectors into this ecosystem that will enable more uh, scale on the tech side and more business growth? Yeah. So um, one of the areas that we're investing heavily in is object-based storage. And if you remember, we, we did an acquisition uh, about 18 months ago. Um, we view big data as predominantly coming to market in the form of object-based interfaces. That would be by, uh, bycast. Yeah, yeah, that's bycast. Right. And so um, we've seen tremendous interest for anybody who's doing large amounts of video storage or patient data records or, you know, PACS images, you know. Um, you know, those all require a more object-oriented approach where you're storing metadata associated with those items for fast search and retrieval. And so we see that as a significant trend in the market and one that uh, we're going to continue investing in as, as we go forward. So, um, you know, that is modifying our, our roadmaps and plans. Um, you know, in the, in the case of Hadoop, we think that's pretty compelling technology as, as well, and we're trying to understand how that is going to adapt and change and grow in the marketplace. Are you going to do your own Hadoop distribution in SiliconANGLE <laughs> announced last week? John we John know, we, announced, we announced, announced yesterday <laughs> that, uh, again, we announced yesterday that we will be distributing Hadoop with every cube deployment, um, like everybody else. So we're jumping on the Hadoop bandwagon. <laughs> you guys aren't, aren't going to do that? <laughs> Tell us. Yeah. Pre-announce pre some Hadoop distribution? Yeah. Uh, no yes, no I plans. <laughs> no plans at this point. <laughs> no, I mean, it's obviously big data is trendy. I mean, you know, we were talking to SAP, and he actually mentioned Bill McDermott, the co-CEO mentioned on stage, actually used the word big data, mm -hmm. but they haven't really had any big data story here at Sapphire. And so, you know, the CIO and the other guys were saying, essentially, it's inherently big data. They've yeah. been dealing with essentially with what people call big data for years. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah. to them it's not so much about big data. They actually use the term that we coined in theCUBE called fast data. Mm -hmm. And so there's a real trend towards, it's not about the data being big, it's about data is, is, is the linchpin 
to the value proposition, which yep. is yep. get it there fast. Yep. So in memory, the SSD yep. market's hot. Yep. Yep. How are you guys dealing with this fast data equation? Can yeah. you share with us anything yeah. in terms of tech, your alliances, your partnerships? Yeah. So um, just to start with the fast data concept, one of the things we recognize there's a huge opportunity to incorporate flash into our designs, right? And a lot of uh, storage vendors took the approach of solid state disk drives, right? And they said, you know, let's just take this very fast memory that we need for fast data and we'll put it in the format of a disk drive and then put it behind this thin soda straw of a, of a uh, pipe. And NetApp took a very different approach and we said, you know, fast memory needs a fast bus and it should be sitting as close to the consumer of that data as possible. And so we developed a uh, flash cache um, that sits right on our processor bus and our controller. Um, it front ends all of our disk drives. What you're finding is for you know large um, big data applications um, where you are having particular files or portions of the objects that are ac frequently accessed, they can retrieve those from flash far faster than they can from disk drives. So um, that's a big advantage. So SAP is embarked upon their HANA project, right? They are going to be heavily dependent, you know, on flash memory for storage of large, you know, HANA data items. And uh, we expect to support that with our flash cache technology. Yeah, you're seeing flash <laughs> throughout that sort of I.O. stack and even into the other side of the channel. As they say, the best I.O. is no I.O. So, uh, yeah. Although we hope some IOs hang around, so we have a job. Yeah. But um, efficiency is another big theme of NetApp. We've heard Dave hits very, you know, really articulate around storage efficiency. We heard him recently at a customer dinner just talking about turn it on. You know, I yeah. don't do a good Dave hits, but just turn it on, try it. You know, yeah. and um, you guys have done a great job of embedding technologies like compression, like dedupe, in there, giving it away for free. I understand there's some cycles in the processor that's required, but um, yeah, but yeah. that's been a good strategy for you guys, and uh, and and and, but but still the uptake isn't as much as you might think. You know, there seems to be a lot of upside there. Why do you think that? Well, is? you know that what Dave was really trying to articulate is we have many different storage efficiency technologies. It's not just one, mm -hmm. right? And it's really the accumulation of those technologies that provides the value to our customers. We have some technologies that everybody turns on but there are others that aren't being as adapt adopted as rapidly. And so Dave's point is, is you're only recognizing half the value until you turn on all these software features. The other great story is we had a customer come to us, very large, you know, Fortune 500 customer, and they said, you know, NetApp, you told me about your dedupe and your cloning technology and, you know, e everything that you do to uh, uh, save me space. But he said, you're the only vendor that actually tells me this is ready to go and should be turned on immediately at first deployment. He said, you know, most of the other uh, storage vendors I'm working with are saying, well, be careful, you know, you, you know, we don't want to disrupt your existing environment. He said, NetApp said, please, turn this on now, see the advantages, we're that confident in what we're doing. And, and that really is our approach. You know, we've worked very hard to make these technologies bulletproof. Many of them have been in existence for the past three to five years. We want everybody to use them ubiquitously, don't, and we don't care about selling more disk drives. I was going to say, Dave. don't you sell less storage <laughs> yeah. in the near term when you That's, do that? Yeah. That? Patrick, we'd, we'd you, rather Pat sell them software to, <laughs> to not have to use as many of those. Patrick, we've been hearing drives. from SAP about the uh, you know investment in the core platform. There's yeah. been a lot of complaints from some of the user base around they're not moving fast enough. Um, but that, again, that's been a good move for SAP given all the security issues that are happening and with all this edge mobile, mobile stuff that they're launching. Um, what do you see the SAP core platform evolving into and how are you vectoring into that? Because yeah. we're going to have the SVP for the platform up next here. Great. Uh, coming on board, we're gonna, we want to ask him some tough questions, but I'd love to get your perspective because you're a partner with SAP, you deal with the alliances. Yeah, awesome. How do you see that evolving? Where is it today? Obviously it's transforming. And what are some of the key things that you see in that? So SAP's been very consistent in driving to lower cost infrastructures on which to run their software. So you think all the way to the days back of the mainframe when they were one of the first companies to adopt client server, mm. uh, open systems computing. Um, they drove aggressively forward with Linux and Windows and x86 architectures. They're now uh, driving their customer base aggressively forward to virtualized environments, right? Through their partnership with, with uh, companies like VMware. Um, we have a very similar vision that we believe there's tremendous cost savings to be realized by driving to standardized, lower cost, you know, um, architectures, and and that's really how we collaborate best with with uh, SAP. Is that software? Or is that silicon or both? That's both, right? Yeah. So virtualization is software, right? X eighty six is really all about silicon. 
um, IP-based uh, networking is, again, oftentimes about... Is there software out there that you see that could be, you say, that's out there today, that's not in silicon, that could be in silicon very quickly? That oh, should be in the silicon? Yeah, uh, sure, yeah. Like what? Oh, uh, Everything. En encry <laughs> encryption, right? <laughs> you know, there's obvious algorithms that are far faster to put into to silicon that we will take advantage of. Patrick, before you go, I want to ask you about the uh, the Ingenio acquisition. We were talking about acquisitions before. Sure. I think you picked up a nice asset there. I think a lot of people, you know, a lot of people will first of all criticize you because you're basically a, a unified storage company, one one architecture, Waffle, yeah. Yeah. you know, on tap, and then sort of you brought in Bycast, but that's okay. It was sort of yeah. object. Object's a little different anyway. Yeah, and but it's important to realize that Bycast builds on top of our current uh, ONTAP technology. Yeah, and you're bringing so that in, I would respect. Yeah. Um, and Genio is quite a bit different. I, I presume that's not just going to morph into uh, ONTAP any, anytime soon, but we've said financially this is a great deal mm -hmm. because you're talking about, uh, you picked it up for what, 438, I think, and it's a company with 700 million in revenue. You're, mm -hmm. you're trading at whatever you're trading at, three, four, five times revenue. The day you did that transaction, you mm -hmm. made a lot of money for your shareholders. So mm -hmm. great move mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from a financial M and A standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, but now it gives you uh, uh, some other options in the marketplace. You, you focused on the video. Val talked to us about you know being right. rich data applications. Right. Right. What does it do from from your standpoint, from a, a, as an alliance uh, executive? What does it do for you, if anything? So Ingenio has you know, two very valuable attributes to our business. One is, is they have relationships with a number of existing uh, uh, storage suppliers, uh, OEM type relationships, and we gain access to those markets you know, that previously we, we didn't. Um, but the other important point is, is that uh, they have a core competency in developing very high bandwidth storage. And there are certain applications in the market that require that, um, and we'll take full advantage of that using the Ingenio technology. So it's a nice rounding out of our technology portfolio. So, so supply chain and new markets, really. Exactly. What, 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 that's what exactly that's going right. after. Yep. So the question for folks out there that, that might want to know your Twitter address, if you have one, do you have a Twitter account? Do you I tweet? Don't, I apologize. Do you blog? Yeah. Um, what do you do uh, on I'm the network? Are you too the busy? CIO uh, of, uh, of I mean, SAP? Guys, NetApp, you got to get your. You know what together because you know SAP's got everyone blogging. And yeah, well, oh, we have we yeah. have quite. We know Val's out there. We know they yeah. hit us up all yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, they might even be watching now. Up for it, <laughs> you know, Val's great. A great interview we had with him. But yeah, you guys got yeah. a lot of tweeters. But you know, yeah. you're not tweeting away. You're too busy doing business. Yeah, the job done. You know, I have enough communication going on in my life right now. But uh, <laughs> we do have people at NetApp that are spending a lot yeah. of time. Simplify sure. is the yeah. goal, not uh, expand. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the cube. Really appreciate it. Been following NetApp. Great to see you as always. Yeah, we. Thank you.